Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In the previous lesson, we've learned to set up a simulated environment for SMS sender, SMS center, and SMS receiver. Then, I've got an interesting question. How to integrate my application with SMSC? Hope I've understood your question properly. I'll make a simple application as Hello World with Java in Eclipse. Within that very application project, I'm gonna put the SMPP source code compile and run everything all together and later on you can customize both your own application and the SMPP. Now I'm gonna briefly demonstrate the outcome, the final result. After completing all the setup, you will have a receiver here. Here we have SMS Center. The simulated sender is right here, a web page. Now I'm going to send a message from the number 1234 to 5678. The message content will be a friendly hello. Let's send a message by clicking on the submit message button. The receiver got the message. The long friendly hello is right at the bottom of the console window. The SMPB also received the message here. The destination address is 5678. The source address, 1234. Alright, let's build up the whole thing from the very beginning. I have my clips right in front of me. I'm going to create a brand new Java project. File. New. Other. Java. Java project. And next. The project name will be, let's say, app with SMPP. Then click finish. Expand the project folder. Right click on the source folder. New class. I'm gonna name my class app with SMPP. You can make the class name something else, as long as you follow rules and Java let you do so. You can come up with your own package name, I'll say com.maxhi.tuto.sms. I want the clips to automatically generate a main function for me, so I'll take this tick box with a public static void main and finish. Well, this is my new application. It doesn't have anything at this moment. I'm gonna make it display some text. Let's say, hi. This app is awesome. February 19th, 2017. Let's try it out. Save all and run it. Right click on the Java class file. Run as Java application. You see, the Eclipse console shows that the text I've typed above. Hi, this app is awesome, February 19, 2017. All right, I'm gonna combine the SMPP with my application. So first of all, let's download everything we need. Open up the browser. Go to the SMPP download page, I'll give you a link in the description below. I'm gonna get the zip file. The download starts and finishes. Find out the zip file and unzip it. Go into that SMPP folder. That's actually how I started the SMPP simulator in the previous lesson, but we didn't really delve into it. If you remember, we start the SMPP simulator with this batch file. Let's have a look at its contents. It's actually executing a Java command with a jar file, smppsim.jar, and with a program argument, conf backslash smppsim.properties. Here is the jar file we are gonna look into. See? In the Windows operating system, you can explore the jar file with some compression software like WinRAR. 
You might be asked to pay though, so I'm gonna use this one. It's good. Now, this is pretty much the content of the jar file. We can start from the manifest file, double click it. We can see what the main class is. So, this is our main class. The package name, or you can say the path, is exactly the same as what is in the manifest file. Now, we've got a little bit problem. The files in the jar are all class files. We cannot open it, we cannot view its code, we cannot modify them through the files. But don't forget, the SMPP simulator is open source. This is it. These two folders are the essence. Let's copy them into our Eclipse project. Choose copy files and folders. Now what Eclipse is telling me is that the content of the folder com will be overwritten. Don't be afraid, yes to all. My application is still here. Safe and sound. And we have the source code of the SMPP. The simulator starts from this class, SMPP sim, according to the manifest file. Let's see what's actually in it. Java program starts from the main function. I'm gonna search main left parenthesis. If you don't know how to pop out the search or find dialog box, you can just hold the control button on your keyboard and press F. When the SMPP sim starts, it prompts SMPP sim is starting. The next line checks whether the program argument is missing or not. You can also study other lines with the help of Eclipse Debugger. Now, let's try to integrate the SMPP with a custom application. It's actually very simple. All you need to do is call the SMPP sim main function inside the main function of your application. Let's see. SMPP sim main function takes an argument, which is a string array. So, let's define a string array. If you still remember, at the beginning of this lesson, we've learned that SMPP sim takes a program argument as what is in the batch file. So I copy the argument. We got an error here. Invalid escape sequence. The reason is that backslash in Java string has to be double backslash. No more errors in the current Java class. Last step, call the SMPP sim's main function. OK, add a try catch block. Save all. And we can still see some errors here. We need to add some dependent libraries. In the project root folder, create a folder. Let's name this folder lib. Inside the folder, we need two jar files, which we can copy from here. Drag and drop. And don't forget to add them to the build path. Select these jar files. Right click, build path, and add the build path. Now you can see the errors has disappeared. All right. Let's try running our program. We got an exception here. Properties file not found. SMPP starts. Specified properties file does not exist. Conf backslash SMPP sim dot properties. This is actually the program arguments of the SMPP sim. It contains all the attributes of the simulator, such as the port that listens to the receiver, system ID, the password, the HTTP port, and so on. We need to put the config folder into our project. It's in the downloaded SMPP root directory. Drag and drop this one. Okay, these are the properties files. We might not use all of them. Let's run our program again. 
I can't see any exception. Let's try to send some messages. Go to the browser. The address of the sender is localhost at port 88. Oops, something is going not right, huh? We need to host this site. We can let the SMPP sim do it. All we need to do is copy the 3W folder into our application project. Restart the program. Let's try again the sender. Now it works. When we submit a message, the SMPP sim has some response. All right, let's get the receiver and put everything all together. It's on my GitHub page, I'll give you the link in the description below. Download this Java project, simple SMS receiver. Extract a zip file. I'm, I'm gonna move the receiver to my workspace so that my product folders are not placed everywhere. Then import the receiver project. File, import, general, existing project into workspace, and next. Navigate through your computer and find out the project folder. In the project section of the dialog box, select the project, simple SMS receiver, and finish. This is our receiver. The program is quite simple and has only one class. We need to change the IP address of the SMSC that the receiver connects to. We can find out the IP address through the command line ipconfig. This is the IP address of the SMPP. Now you can see these two addresses are the same. I think the receiver is ready now. Let's see. Wait, we have to make sure that the SMSC listens to the receiver at the right port. Its configuration is in the config file. Too many, huh? To find out the exact file, we need to go back to our SMPP application. This tells us the file we're looking for. It's here. The SMPP port here, here have to be the same. You can try on your own what would happen if they're different. Okay, save all. By the way, the system ID and the password of the receiver also have to be registered in the SMPP config. We talked about it in the last lesson. Now, run the program. The receiver is ready. The receiver starts. The receiver connects to the SMPP. And this new message is actually triggered when we were testing the sender a few minutes ago. However, we didn't have any receiver at that time and the message couldn't go anywhere. Now, as soon as the receiver becomes available, the message shows up. Okay, we're almost there. We're gonna test everything all together. We need two console windows. One monitors the receiver, the other watches the app with SMPP. I'm gonna deactivate this couple of changes so that I can watch both the response of the receiver and the response of the SMPP at the same time. This area is receiver, and this area, SMPP SIM. Now let's get the sender. Imagine 1, 2, 3, 4 is sending to 5, 6, 7, 8. Hey, hello. When I send it, it shows up in the receiver. Also in the SMPP simulator. Destination address. The source address, one, two, three, four. It's good. It's exactly what I expected.
That's pretty much it. If you have any question, please leave a comment below. I'll reply within a week. If necessary, I'll even make new videos on certain topics. As always, if you learned something and if you think this video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.